So how much money are you going to make in 2024 as an airline pilot? We're going to take the next 10 minutes to explain to you exactly how much money, how to make more money, and what it's going to take for you to become an airline pilot in 2024. So how much does an airline pilot actually make? Well, let's talk about in the United States, not the folks that make pesos or euros or anything like that. What do they actually pay airline pilots in the United States in US dollars? Is it millions of dollars? No, it's not millions of dollars, sadly, actually. You're probably not gonna make millions of dollars. You might make millions of pesos, but you're not gonna make millions of dollars being an airline pilot, at least not to start with. Let's hit some facts here. What does this guy make? Well, he's been at the airlines for 30 years. It's his 30th year flying for American Airlines. How much does he get paid? Well, he actually brought home $380,000 last year. That's a big paycheck. Sounds awesome, right? What about if he was to start out today? What if it's you with 1,500 hours? You got your commercial pilot license at 250 hours. You built up flight time doing whatever sort of weird pilot jobs, flight instructing, aerial survey, all that stuff. Now you are all dressed up, ready to go, and you've got 1,500 hours ready to get hired on at the airlines. Well, what are they going to pay you? Well, let's look at American Airlines. Here's their pay scale. So this is broken out into a pay scale for first officers and captains. What we see here is a year one first officer or co-pilot where you're going to be starting is a hundred some bucks an hour. Multiply that by roughly a thousand and you can figure out how much you're going to make per year. Maybe you can just multiply that by like a factor of 1100 or 1200 with benefits and overtime pay and all that sort of stuff. We can see here, let's say you stay a first officer for five years until your seniority allows you to upgrade to captain and then you move up to fifth year captain pay. So now you're at $280 an hour. So, wow, that's really great. So in five years, I'll be making almost $300,000 a year. Nope. You're actually not going to be getting hired on at American Airlines or Delta or United or any of these big paying companies with 1,500 hours. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. You're actually going to be starting out in a smaller airplane flying for what's called the regionals. These are kind of like the minor leagues of baseball. And you're like, well, what do you mean regionals? Well, let's take a look at this airplane here. This airplane looks like American Airlines. It's not. It says American Eagle on the side of it. Let's look at this airplane. It's not United. It's United Express. It's actually not even owned or operated by United. It's owned and operated by SkyWest. This American Eagle jet is owned and operated by PSA. So totally separate company. And these smaller companies are who is going to hire you as a brand new pilot with 1500 hours. You can say, well, I'm not a brand new pilot. I have 1500 hours. I've been flying for years. You're the only one on this plane who can possibly fly it. You're the only chance we've got. Yeah, but they're going to hire you with 1500 hours and you're going to be a brand new airline pilot for them first because American Airlines has their pick of more experienced pilots when they're paying those higher wages. Why do they do this in the first place? Why have regionals? Well, because you can see these American Airlines executives going, oh, pay pilots? Well, yeah, the union for the pilots is very strong. They demand a lot of money for their pilots. And the pilots say, I want $300,000 after I've been here for 10 years, 20 years. And the airline executives say, okay, sure, that's fine because you're flying this big plane with lots of people over to Europe and we make a ton of money because it has 300 seats. <laughs> but then the airline executives say, well, we really need to get those people to onto that big airplane we need to pick them up from tiny little towns like Sarasota and Knoxville and Raleigh and tiny little towns, Greensboro, South Carolina. How do they get them? Well, they're not going to send the big gigantic jet to get them because they wouldn't be able to fill it up with enough passengers. It's not economically feasible to do that. So they fly smaller planes there. These smaller planes have less seats. They can't charge as much for the tickets because they're shorter flights. Plus, there's not as many seats, so they're not getting as much revenue from tickets, but they still have to pay two pilots and pay flight attendants, and they burn a lot of fuel, and they take up gate space at big airports, the same gate space that a bigger jet with more seats and more paying passengers would take up. So it's not that economical, really, to fly these little airplanes. But the big airlines need to get their passengers to their hubs somehow so they can make big money on those bigger airplanes flying those longer routes, transcontinental or intercontinental. So what do they do? Enter the regional airlines where you're going to start off your airline career. The regional airlines have a slightly different pay scale because it's a totally different company. They have smaller pilot groups, less unions. And what the big airlines will actually do is they will take several of these regional companies 
and say, oh, each of you have 2,000 pilots, each of you have 100 or so airplanes, and we're going to see who will be the lowest bidder to fly our passengers from little town America to New York or Chicago or our big hubs. Who's going to do it the cheapest? And then those regional companies bid whoever's the lowest bidder gets to fly the passengers. Whoever doesn't get the bid goes out of business. And then all those pilots are out of job. They have to get hired on at, well, you guessed it, their regional airline that did get the bid, who is probably not paying super well because, well, they don't have enough money from the big airline to pay those hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar wages. So what are you going to make as year one starting out as a co-pilot, as a first officer at the regional airlines? Well, good news is 2024 is turning out to be a pretty good year and the pay rates have gone a lot higher. They are now starting actually first officers at the regionals at the 90 to hundred dollar an hour range. So sure, 90 to a hundred thousand dollars per year, your very first year. In the post-COVID world, airlines are hiring like crazy and they need people to fill those seats, especially at those entry-level jobs. That was not always the case in the past. What can we expect as a regional pilot over our career at the regionals? Well, it's probably going to last anywhere from two to four years. You're going to build up at least a thousand hours in the right seat and then upgrade to captain. Captain pay at the regionals is usually around 150 to 180 bucks an hour. So we're talking about 150 to 180 thousand dollars per year. Now, once you get a thousand hours in the left seat, being a captain, so thousand hours in the right seat, thousand hours in the left, typically two to four years to get there, then sure, Delta American United is going to come calling. And of course, if you have anything else in your back pocket that's going to make you more attractive, such as prior military experience or anything else that's really interesting on your resume that would make you stand out amongst other people, that will help you get there a little bit sooner, closer to the one to two year mark instead of the two to four year mark or five to six year mark. You ready, boys? Hey, you nervous? Because I could take that seat if you're nervous. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. But Pan Am wants actual pilots in the left seat. <laughs> Yes, as soon as you get hired on at the big leagues, American, Delta, United, Hawaiian Air, Alaskan Air, any of those big airlines that you really want to get to that pay the big bucks, well, you'll be starting back over again as a first officer at year one pay on their pay scale. You want to do the honors, Alan? Yeah. No, you never touch this. This is Captain Dave. Now, time. the good news here is they do have really good quality of life contracts or union contracts that help improve the quality of life at the majors compared to the regionals where... They're going to have multipliers mixed in there. So instead of taking the 90 bucks an hour that they're paying you year one and multiplying it by a thousand, maybe you can multiply it by 1200 without having to work all that much harder. You can also potentially upgrade to captain year one at some of these airlines, making more than $200 per hour, but you're going to be signing yourself up for a life of a rather bad schedule for quite a while. Scheduling is going to really impact your QOL, your quality of life, which is probably a term you may have heard before, maybe not, but at the airlines, it is quite important. And when I became an airline pilot, it meant nothing to me. All I cared about was show me the money. And it turns out, you really start to value getting 19 or 20 days off per month as a first officer, and that will stop you from wanting to upgrade to become a captain, although you'll make twice as much money going from, say, $100 per hour to $200 per hour or even more, well, you may really enjoy all that time off. In upgrading to captain, getting that $200 per hour may mean that you might only have 9, 10, 12 days off per month. Or it may mean that they bump you from your home base of where you're based, say you're living in Charlotte, North Carolina, and you're able to drive to the airport, go fly an airplane, go to work, and then go home, and you upgrade to captain, they may bump you out of Charlotte because the more junior base is going to be something like San Francisco or LaGuardia. Now, you're going to have to commute to work, and you're not going to get paid to commute from Charlotte to JFK or San Francisco. You can fly for free to get there on the jump seat and be a standby passenger going back and forth, but that four-day trip that you're getting paid for when you go to work for four days at a time, say, now you're going to have a day of commuting perhaps on the front end and a day on the back end that turns that into six days and your 13 days off a month just became eight or nine days off a month. A lot more money, a lot less quality of life. So, the answer to the big question, how much money are you going to make as an airline pilot in 2024 if you choose this path? If you start your career right now to become an airline pilot, start that training. Well, let's go ahead and look at an example here to make sense of all this. Let's look at Jim. 
Jim's your average college dropout, took a few classes, didn't really like it, didn't want to spend all that money to become a doctor or a lawyer, so he decided to become a pilot. Becoming a pilot's about half as much money or even less than becoming a doctor, and you can make the same or more money. So Jim spent about a year and a half going from zero to hero, zero to commercial pilot and flight instructor. Cost him just under $100,000 to get all those licenses, the private, the instrument, the commercial pilot license, and the flight instructor rating. Now he's able to go ahead and use those certificates for about a year and a half, another two years, to build up time to 1,500 hours to get hired at the airlines. They're gonna pay him at the flight school to start teaching and instructing, and they'll pay him about 40, 50 grand a year. Once you move from that, the next step is going to be the regionals. Now he's there making a hundred grand a year, his first year as a first officer. There's some signing bonuses. There's all that good stuff. Life's great. He spends two years sitting in the right seat before he can upgrade to captain and start making about $160,000 a year. Barry, I am six months pregnant. It's top secret. I need a fridge. I need beds for our children. I need a stove, a fucking washing machine. The airlines are throwing a lot of money around right now, so 2024 is a great year to begin your airline pilot career or any career in aviation. The great news is if you do go all the way through flight training and you decide the airlines are not for you, there are hundreds of other careers in aviation you can pursue. And if you want to be guaranteed to be successful in flight training and pass the written exams and pass the check rides and the flight tests, then you should check out some of our online courses that will help you get prepared to pass those FAA tests the link is in the description below for that. There's also a link down there if you want to learn more about becoming a private pilot. We have a whole other video on that and what the path looks like to get from zero to hero, to get from zero all the way to airline pilot. What are all the different certificates and licenses and training that is required? The link to that video is in the description below. And there's a whole free airline pilot kit the link is in the description below for that as well. You can go ahead and download that for free. That will tell you everything you need to know and how to save time and money in the process. I guarantee that that kit, that booklet there, will save you at least $2,000 on your private pilot flight training if you go ahead and read that. It's totally free to download. And if you have any other questions about becoming an airline pilot or any sort of career in aviation, go ahead and put those questions right down in the comments below. We'll respond to you and do whatever we can to help you be successful in aviation. It is an amazing career. I enjoyed my time being an airline pilot, I no longer am. I enjoy doing other things in aviation. And there's just so many different career paths you can take. But nowadays, an airline pilot's a hard thing to pass up with what they are paying out there. Jim certainly uh, enjoyed his 30 year career and got to retire with a house on the beach and a boat in the backyard. Again, guys, check out the links in the description below to learn a little bit more about the process. The more you know before you begin this process, the more time and money you will save. It is not cheap to become a pilot, but it does pay dividends in the long run. And as always, if you cannot fly every day, fly 8 and we will see you guys in the next one.